I think a person that would get smushed by a steam stack if the Titanic was modern day, it would be like an influencer. It'd be like Addison Rae. <laughs> <laughs> It's also a weird precedent to set within yourself that you can only write a best-selling book when you have traumatized a woman and can mine her experience for your fiction. I don't think that's good, Harden. I don't think- What's gonna happen if you get a three-book deal? You're gonna have to ruin so many people's lives! Hi, we're back with the green screen. I knew you missed it. I knew it. I knew it. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Carly. If you're new here, you found it, bitch. Congrats. Congrats. Congratulations. I have a crazy energy today. I'm filming this before lunch, which is always a mistake because I'm so hungry and I just bring insane energy. I bring rancid bad vibes to youtube.com and that's allowed. Not enough people are focusing on making the internet a worse place. And that's why I'm so brave. Today we are going to be talking about the fifth after movie, after everything. Yeah, I get really confused with these movie names because <laughs> it's like ever after, after everything. Like they're all kind of, they have after in them, but they're not distinct enough. It's called after everything. It's the fifth after movie. It got released in September. I was planning on seeing it, but I didn't want to see it the first weekend in theaters because I was like, I don't really want to be around the after fangirls. I don't want to yuck their yum, so to speak. I want them to enjoy the insanity that is the after movies, the insanity that is a five movie romance series based on a Harry Styles fan fiction. I want that for them. I'm going to go the next weekend. I'm not going to go opening weekend. It was only in theaters in Toronto where I live for two days. So I had to pirate it. R. Sorry. Sorry. Lock me up. Basically, if you don't know, I have another video on this channel where I watched all four after movies. I titled that watching all the after movies. <laughs> and, um, oh, 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 was I wrong? Because after I posted that, everyone's like, <laughs> bad news. There's another one coming out. So watch that video if you want to be caught up on what happened in the first four after movies. I'm going to be talking about the final after movie, After Everything, and this movie ruined my life. I'm so mad it exists. I really do feel like I have been trying, I'm on a healing journey, if you don't know, and I'm trying to remain relatively positive and put good vibes into the end. I just want to put good vibes into the universe. You know what I mean? Not with After though. After pisses me off so much, I can't. I can't! But apparently like the studio the movie studio announced that it's the last after movie this movie is very very weird and we're gonna get into why because if you're what if you don't know what after is it's basically about the romance between tessa young and harden scott tessa is kind of like good girl not like other girls likes to read innocent and harden is menace to society deeply traumatized refuses to go to therapy never learned a lesson in his life and basically they get together and then break up and then get back together and then break up trauma ensues get together again, breakup, bender, cheating, all this stuff. It's just bad relationship, bad vibes. It's that for four movies. So I really thought that the fourth movie was the end because I was like, where else can this go? Because the fourth movie basically ends with them breaking up for good. She moves across the country to New York to get away from him. He decides to go to AA for his alcohol abuse problems. He writes an entire book without her knowledge, exposing the very intimate relationship details of their shared relationship. They have sex. He doesn't tell her about the book. She finds the book in his bag, gets mad, says, please don't publish it. He publishes it anyway. And then the last movie ends with her kind of like going to a reading where he's reading a chapter of the book that's about their relationship that he published without any of her consent and walking away. Okay? So I was like, surely there's nowhere else to go with this, but there is. This movie is very weird because even though it is the story of Tessa and Harden. Tessa's really not in this movie a lot. They had filmed, I think, chunks of it before the pandemic and then reworked a lot of it so that she's only in flashbacks and like the very, very end of the movie. They filmed a lot of this in Portugal and she's not, she didn't go with the rest of the cast. She, support, she wasn't in Portugal. So let's talk about this. I'm going to do a quick introduction catch up of other important facts that I think you might need to know as context if you haven't seen the other after movies, but watch the video that I made on them. It's insane. So Harden and Tessa meet in university in the first movie. Tessa cheats on her boyfriend with Harden. At the end of the movie, it's revealed that the entire relationship was based on a bet Harden made with his friends that he could get Tessa to fall in love with her, fall in love with him. Sorry. I just, I'm so used to platforming and speaking the truths of women, women in STEM, women really anywhere that like, I just wish that it was constantly women. 
everywhere. So that happens. Then for basically the next two movies, they break up, get together, break up, get back together over and over again. Harden is really traumatized because he witnessed his mother, who is British. <laughs> it's not really an important detail, but he is in England in the very beginning of this book. His mother, who is British, got attacked by a bunch of men because of his dad's gambling, his dad's gambling bets, and his dad's American. So in the beginning of the movie, he's just with his dad, but now he's living with his mom. His mom gets married to his biological dad. It's a mess. Who cares? All you need to know is he's deeply traumatized, never learned a lesson in his life, has addiction issues that are not handled with nuance. They're not written in a way of being like, this is a story of addiction and how addiction ruins lives. No, no, they're not. And like I said earlier, this movie basically ends with him publishing a very revealing tell-all of the relationship between him and Tessa. She begs him not to write it. He writes it anyway. Okay, it becomes a bestseller. And he has a stepbrother named Landon, and Landon is really good friends with Tessa, and Landon has a girlfriend, Nora. I know that seems out of nowhere, but it's gonna become important later. Now, let's break into what really f***ing happens in the fifth and final after movie, After Ever, After Ever After, Two After, what is it called? After Everything? Two After Two Everything. I'm losing my mind. So, Hardin is a best-selling novelist. Yes, New York Times bestseller list. Absolutely. Dan James found Dead in a Ditch. Harden Scott, that's the only name. That's the name of literature. That's the Pulitzer Prize winning author, Harden Scott. He's a best-selling author for the after book that he wrote about him and Tessa's relationship. But because Tessa has decided to not be with him and it was rightfully quite upset about this, he has devolved a hundred percent. At the end of the last movie, he's like, I'm doing better. I'm writing now. I'm an AA. I'm sober. I'm slaying. Forget that happened. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. It's not happening anymore. It's not happening anymore. He's devolved. He's devolved. So he's drinking again. He's going on a bender. He's not delivering on the second book that he signed in his two book deal. So he wrote after he's supposed to write another book and he can't write another book because Tessa's his muse. Because why not add another unhealthy fold into this relationship? Not only are they awful to each other, do not trust each other constantly, break up, get back together, addicted to the drama of their relationship. He also has no creative output without her. Yes. Uh, so he has writer's block and he's going to have to give back the considerable advance that he got for this second book if he doesn't deliver a manuscript soon. It's Caroline Calloway core. Absolutely. She did it better. She looked better than Hardin. She had orchids in her hair and beautiful long blonde hair. Hardin wishes wishes he was Caroline Calloway. He, it's, it's crazy. So his publisher, Catherine, to inspire him, takes him to a club. Seems, again, everyone in this movie is obsessed with going to clubs with their, with their like employees and professional contacts. And it seems like um, a potion just primed for disaster, but nothing happens. She takes him to a club. He has a flashback because he misses Tessa of Tessa dancing with a guy in a club. This is a flashback to the first movie, okay? Because in the first movie, she's working at a publishing company with Dylan Sprouse. They get drunk at a club and she is broken up with Harden at the time and dances with a guy at the club. Now, this is a plot hole because Harden was not at the club and Tessa never told him that she danced with another guy and yet he's having a flashback of her dancing with another guy. So what's the truth, Harden? Are you that so ravening? Are you, are you, do you have, you have the sight? You have the special sight? You're an oracle? What is it? So Hardin has dinner with his mom and is saying like, I can't write, my life is awful. I need either Tessa or my mom to kind of fix my problems. Women are rehabilitation centers for traumatized men. What is a girlfriend if not younger mommy? You know what I mean? So he's talking to his mom. He's like, I can't write. Nothing ever works for me because I'm self-destructive and I refuse to move on. I refuse to go to therapy. This fucking series would be 20 minutes if Hardin went to therapy. You are a rich author. Go to therapy. I'm begging you. I will pay for the first session. I need you to go. His mom says he has to go into his past to basically make amends with his past flaws. What's the word? I feel like I've been smoking too much weed and my brain is getting dumber. Um, he has to go back and undo the wrongs of his past in order to let go, forgive himself, and move on. And she references this girl, Natalie. She's like, maybe you should go make amends with Natalie. She lives in Portugal now. So that's kind of what this is. I wish it was like a Mamma Mia kind of thing where he's going to Portugal to just love and, and laugh and Meryl Streep is going to sing ABBA covers. But unfortunately, it's not. It's Harden going to terrorize a woman who is trying to move on with her life. And it happens to be in Portugal. So Natalie is played 
by the actress who plays Ruby in Sex Education, and she's fucking phenomenal. She's great. She brings such pace to the dialogue. She's honestly clocking in as an actress. Gorgeous, gorgeous, beautiful long hair. <laughs> really brings a fun, nice pace to the dialogue. Because I've mentioned before, the actor who plays Harden is Rafe Fiennes' nephew. I found out recently that it's not Ralph Fiennes, it's pronounced Rafe, which is a crime. The actor is literally British, but he speaks so slow and is kind of doing like a loose Harry Styles impression that it sounds like an American actor doing a British accent. So the pacing of a lot of these lines is like very slow and very weird and very stilted. This actor, her name is Mimi, what's her name? Mimi Keen. And she brings such fucking pace to this. Oh, we're so, oh, I'm so happy she's in this movie. She's slaying it. Her name is Natalie. She lives in Portugal. She works at a bridal shop. Great. That's her thing. You know, Tessa likes books and Mimi loves wedding dresses. The two kinds of girls you can possibly be. Try to move on from her life because Harden has wronged her in the past. We're going to figure out why. And once you figure out why he is trying to get her forgiveness, the things he did to this poor woman. <laughs> this movie takes a turn from like dark romance, man learning about his, to learning to love again and to, and to forgive himself into just like a thriller. Like leave her alone. So. Natalie is from London and she and Harden had a relationship when he was living with his mom in London. Now she was very much kind of like a good girl from a more conservative family. That's kind of how this works, right? Because this movie really does hinge on, all of these movies, hinge on the convention of like virginal women are good and women who like to have sex sometimes have like a purple streak in their hair and they vape and they're bad. So she was prudish, good girl, nice, smart, lovely, and Harden. <laughs> I hate that this is the, the narrative of this movie. He loses an expensive watch in a gambling game. Are you following? Are you following me? <laughs> so in order to get the watch back, he makes a bet with his friend that he can get Natalie to have sex with him and film it and if he does that, then he gets the watch back. If you're kind of confused as to like what the, the actual value of this, like why is getting a woman to agree to make a sex tape with you the same value as an expensive watch? It's because kind of like the deception and humiliation of women through sex. To a misogynist, nothing is more valuable. Quite simply put, there's nothing sweeter than the taste of lying to an unassuming woman who trusts you. There's nothing better as far as Harden Scott is concerned. So he <laughs> romances her the same as he did with Tessa, because in the first movie, if you'll recall, that relationship is also based on a bet in which he bets his friends that he can make her fall in love with him. So in that movie, he's like, I'm so sorry, Tessa. I can't believe that I did the bet. I, I love you. And it's like, you didn't learn your lesson from the Natalie thing? Psychopath, where is the Shane Dawson <laughs> documentary on Harden? So Harden gets Natalie to agree to not only have sex with him, but film it. Not for other people. She does not agree to make a sex tape for public consumption. She does not agree to make a sex tape to be viewed by anyone else but them two. In order to prove that they made a sex tape, Hardin doesn't show his friend on the phone. He sends it to his friends who then send it around and then it gets sent around through all their friends and everything and functionally ruins Natalie's life uh, because a sex tape that she made with somebody that she trusted at the time um, is now basically being used as revenge. Yes, Harden, if you are still wondering, is the romantic lead of all five movies. Now, I did a little bit of research into this. In the UK Criminal Justice and Courts Act of 2015, it states that participating in the distribution of revenge porn can get you up to two years in jail. More because she was presumably maybe a minor at the time. If somebody agrees to film themselves having sex with you or send you a nude and it's just for you and then you participate in the distribution of that, you're going to jail, babe. Harden, lock them up, send them to the slammer, get the cuffs out. I don't agree in the prison industrial complex except for Harden, put him in jail, send him to Australia, get him out of here. So because of the humiliation that she suffered because Harden sent their sex tape to his friends. She moves to Portugal to get away from the humiliation. Years pass <laughs> and Harden follows her to Portugal to beg for forgiveness. Leave her alone, leave her alone, leave her alone. So he shows up to Natalie's place of work, the bridal shop. Awesome, good, sick move. You know, the next possible step when you ruin a woman's life because you distribute revenge porn 
and make her move countries, show up to her place of work unannounced. He does that. She's like, get out of here, but invites him to later. They can talk out, talk it out later what's happened with them when she's hanging out with her friends. So she's hanging out with her friends and they all go cliff diving. And there's this guy named Sebastian. Now in this movie, Sebastian is kind of framed as like jealous because he likes Natalie and evil, but he is the only motherfucker with a shred of sense in this entire movie because he gets hard on this number immediately and punishes him the whole movie. And for that, he is a king, okay? So like Sebastian is there when they're all go, they're all hanging out on the beach. He kind of forces Harden to go cliff diving. Harden starts talking to Natalie and basically tells her what happened between him and Tessa. And Natalie kind of has to explain to him why Harden publishing the illicit details of a tenuous relationship between him and Tessa is is actually an invasion of Tessa's privacy. And she's like, it's an invasion of her privacy. You know, like when you when you leaked our sex tape to get a watch back? Remember when you ruined my life for a watch you lost in a poker game? I do. So she kind of explains to him that what he's done is wrong because it's important to remember that in the after universe, kind of, women are there to teach men. You're really there as a woman in the after universe to get traumatized, be a slut, or teach a man a lesson. And what a dream. You know what I mean? Tag yourself. Are you traumatized, a slut, or teaching a man a lesson? Because you can only be one. And what a lovely array of roles to play. Aren't we so lucky? We could be so lucky to be any of those roles. So she explains this to him and he kind of is like, oh, huh, okay. After this, Natalie's friend Sebastian beats hard enough. It's the best f***ing scene in the entire series, one might argue. They're like, no, Sebastian, you're just jealous. And it's like, no, Sebastian, he's doing vigilante justice. He's my favorite f***ing character. He's the only one that knows, he sees Harden walk into f***ing Portugal and he goes, no, I'm gonna beat this guy up. And for that, he is an icon. For that, he is a hero. Give Sebastian the key to the f***ing city. So he beats Harden up. Harden like tries to beat him up. Harden ends up in jail. Awesome. Get used to it, babe. Because as soon as you touch down in the UK, you're going to prison for the distribution of revenge, my love. So get used to it. Get used to the cell. Harden calls his father, his biological father, not his evil American dad. It doesn't matter if you haven't watched the sh movies, but if you've watched the movies, you know he has an evil American dad and then he also has a dad that used to be Tessa's boss. I hate that that sentence makes us an iota of sense to me. So his boss dad, not his evil American dad, comes to bail him out of prison in Portugal. And basically, Hardin's dad gives him a pep talk while he's bailing him out of Portuguese prison and says like, hey, even though you can't get Tessa back, you can still move on with your life. What an idea. And Hardin is like, I never f***ing thought of that before. He's like discovering being a human. For the first time, bad things can happen that are your fault and you can, fun fact, move on with your f***ing life. So Hardin, fresh out of jail, newly discovered the concept of human resilience and not ruining the lives of others in the pursuit of self-destruction. <laughs> I love, I love learning. I actually love, love it. I can't get enough of it. You know, let's get crash course human empathy, link it up for Hardin. You know, he's back on the streets and he decides instead of going back to London, he's going to stay in Portugal. He's going to write and finish his second book in the two book deal. Remember that? Remember how he has a two book deal? Honestly, this is the most, sorry, I got to move it down. I'm, I always make the mic too close to my face because I'm used to doing stand up where every single mic is the most busted mic in the world. And you literally have to basically fucking deep throat it to be heard. Okay. Harden has a two book deal. The most realistic thing about this entire fucking movie is that the most rancid, awful man in the world is an accomplished author. <laughs> Nothing has been truer of society in any of these movies, actually. So he's writing his second book. He's staying in Portugal just so he can kind of like leer around. He can just kind of leer around, make sure Natalie doesn't feel safe. Can't forget her past for one moment, okay? While he's there, he gets a wedding invitation for Landon, his stepbrother, and his girlfriend Nora's wedding. So Landon and Nora are getting wedding, or getting wedding, yeah, getting wedding. I am trying to be compassionate with myself, but I am pretty dumb and I'm making it hard. So Landon and Nora are getting married. If you are kind of thinking of After Still as a One Direction fan fiction, which it is, Liam Payne of the Impulsive Podcast is getting married. Tessa lives in New York with Landon and Nora. And Nora and Tessa are really good friends because Tessa is kind of like a virginal queen good girl and so is Nora. And they can't be friends with the sluts with colored hair, so they have to be friends with each other. So Tessa is going to be Nora's maid of honor and Harden is going to be Landon's maid of... Man of 
best man. So they're both going to be at the wedding. And Harden has shown throughout all of these movies that he has no ability to not make an event about him the second him and Tessa are in a room. And Tessa, for all of the amount that I have been trying to defend this girl, loves to make a, a public situation about herself. So this is bad. While he, this happens, Natalie comes to Harden's Portugal house to apologize for Sebastian beating him up. Girl, don't apologize. That's karma. Karma's my boyfriend. Facts. Don't apologize. She's bringing him like a little care package and she's like, I'm sorry my friend was the only person in the entire world who aimed to give you a taste of your own fucking medicine. I'm sorry that my friend kind of saw through your self-sabotaging veneer and realized that at your core, you're just a very selfish person who has no ability to take any accountability for his actions and actually has a pretty startling behavior of lying to women and dating them as a vet. I'm sorry. <laughs> she goes there, she tries to kiss him. It's awful, it's awful. Free Mimi Keen, <laughs> it's awful. She tries to kiss him and he's like, no, I'm in love with Tessa. Tessa, run girl, run. And she's like, you're right. But she forgives him for doing revenge. So I guess he's not going to jail. It's a real bummer. While she's at his apartment though, he shows her the manuscript for his second book that he's just finished. Now, if you recall, the first book he wrote is called After and it's about Tessa. The second book he wrote was about him and Natalie and it's called Before. One thing about Harden Scott, he's never gonna learn a lesson in his life. Like remember when Natalie was like, hey, when you published really private details about Tessa in a book, that was bad. He went, okay, and I hear you, but what if I published really private details about you in a book, would that be different? For some reason, because Natalie is on her healing journey and wants Harden just out of Portugal and out of her life, she said it's okay, he can publish the manuscript for before. Great. I really think that this is bad for a couple of reasons. I also think beyond just like, leave Natalie alone. It's also a weird precedent to set within yourself that you can only write a best-selling book when you have traumatized a woman and can mine her experience for your fiction. I don't think that's good, Harden. I don't think, what's gonna happen if you get a three book deal? You're gonna have to ruin so many people's lives. Now it's time for the wedding. Oh wait, there's one more thing. He buys Natalie a house to apologize which is the only good thing Harden has ever done in his entire fucking life. He buys her a house. Good. You know what? If I was traumatized, um, if I was traumatized, Carly, <laughs> I would forgive the people who have wronged me if they bought me a house. I'm just putting that out into the universe right now. You know who you are. You, you fear me, me. <laughs> for the things I know that you've done. Buy me a house, it'll go away balls in your court. So he buys Natalie a house, then leaves Portugal to go to Landon and Nora's wedding, where him and Tessa are going to be. I want to say one thing. If I'm Landon or Nora, and I know that the two people closest to this couple who are going to be a part of the wedding are um, incredibly self-centered and are unable to make an event about anybody but themselves, I would separate them. I wouldn't have them walk down the aisle arm in arm. I understand that they're the maid of honor and the best man, but it feels like a lot of crises could be avoided if you separate them. Just separate them. I'm begging you. It's just such a bad idea. Let me plan the wedding because I can, I can actually fix a lot of this. After like the actual ceremony, Hardin has like a little brother too. Who f***ing cares? He has a little brother that's a child and he bribes that child to ask Tessa for a dance because she can't say no to a child and then he'll swoop in. So he's kind of like tricking her again into dancing with him. That happens and they dance. A relationship isn't a good relationship unless you have to trick your partner into being with you. I've always said that. I've long held that to be one of my core beliefs. Then also at the reception, he gives a long winded best man speech that is basically entirely about him. He's like, so we're all here for, we're all here for, for Nora and Landon. Isn't love crazy? I loved once and I lost my soulmate, but he's British and sounds dumber cause he's speaking very slow. So he gives this whole fucking speech and it works on Tessa and I hate this, I hate this. Every single fucking after movie is like, they shouldn't be together. He's wronged Tessa or she's wronged him. And then they do one thing and they're like, Fuck. we have to be together. So he leaves. She follows him out after this fucking stupid best man speech. They get back together and he proposes. <laughs> and then there's a time jump where Harden has finished his third book called Later. So we have After, Before, and Later, the Harden-Scott trilogy. 
they have a child and Tessa is pregnant with another child. And that is how the movies end. That is how After ends. What? So I guess the moral of the story is make the same mistakes over and over again. And you can make the same mistakes over and over again if you want, as long as you are willing to become a famous author. So that's the final after movie. This movie truly ruined my life. Like I watched Red, White, and Royal Blue and I made a video on it and I took it down. And everyone's like, where did it go? Took it down. It's not coming out. Get over it. Get over it. I'm so mad. I'm sorry. I'm mad at this movie and I'm taking it out on you. But like watching Red, White, and Royal Blue, the movie is bad. Not a good movie but it's fun. This movie put me in a bad mood. I'm, I just wasn't happy to be there. I'm so happy these movies are done. What a ride though. You know what I mean? Like what a ride. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, subscribe. You know what I mean? Like give it a sub. You don't have to, who cares? I post videos whenever I want. I'm working on a part two of my Riverdale breakdown, but who knows? Really time is a construct and I'm gonna do what I want to do. You're not my boss. No one's my boss. I'm sorry. I My brain is melted because I'm talking about this movie. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you soon. My Instagram and everything is in the description below. My podcast, all that fun stuff. See you soon. Bye.